for joining me today. I recently did an update on my species and uh, novelty phalaenopsis and now it's time to make an update on my uh, complex hybrids before they drop <laughs> all their flowers. They have been in bloom for quite some time now. They live here all year round in my pantry on this south facing window. It's a bit too tight here, so I'm taking them to my lounge so that uh, we can take a better look at them. So here they are. I grow them in water culture, as you can see, which I started two years ago. I will explain how I do it after we take a look at each one of them. This one is my largest so far. I bought it two years ago and it is blooming for me for the third time. It's a good bloomer. It's a good uh, plant. I love the color. These are my yellow ones. This uh, largest one here is my oldest Phalaenopsis. I've had it for five years, five or six years. Not my best uh, Phalaenopsis, but the poor thing has survived all my try and error along the years. She did not bloom for a long time, but she seems to be finally uh, settling down. She was one of the reasons why I decided to try water culture and she's liking it. This other one, I bought it in bloom last fall and it's blooming again. Very happy with it. This is my favorite type, medium sized Phalaenopsis with the smaller flowers. The blooms are very lovely. This is a mini Phalaenopsis. I've had it since uh, 2018, but it never did well until now. She's loving water culture. It bloomed last year and it is blooming again. The blooms are very fragrant, <laughs> almost too fragrant for such a small orchid. This is a named hybrid, Phalaenopsis Sogo Pikachu. And I bought it in October of 2020. It was in bloom then and it never stopped blooming ever since. Buds after buds on older spikes. And she also grew new spikes this spring. At least 18 months blooming. Not only it produced buds that bloomed sequentially, but it also formed a katie on um, the older spike, which I already removed. I really need to give this orchid the chance to recover <laughs> before it gets completely exhausted. So after this video, I'm going to cut off the spikes and place them in a glass vase so that I can still enjoy them. This is the keiki. Uh, despite the small leaves, it had wonderful long roots, so it was okay to be removed. I'm growing it differently in Orchiata bark because I'm giving it to my daughter as soon as it gets a bit larger and stronger. This one here was a cakey once. It came out of a very mistreated orchid, not intentionally of course, but um, the mother plant was kept in dirt, in full sun, and um, it still bloomed for several years and threw cakeys as a cry for help, poor thing, until it did not have the strength anymore. I could only get it in time to rescue this one keiki and uh, I have been babying it for the past two years. I'm very happy that it is doing so well now in water culture and I'm over the moon with her first blooming. This was once a very large orchid. It bloomed three times on the first year I had it and then collapsed, lost leaves and all of the root system. It was then that I decided to go with water culture. This orchid responded very well, but she has never again been a reliable phalaenopsis after that. Not many roots or leaves. 
However, last year she threw two spikes, uh, but um, I did not let it bloom to give her the chance to get stronger. In spite of it, she lost most of, of her roots, although she grew new ones right after. Uh, really difficult to understand what uh, she's thinking. This year she uh, threw this spike and bloomed. The blooms did not last long though. There's still one here, one bloom, and more buds to come. But I'm going to cut the spike right after this to give this uh, plant more growing time. I once had a Phalaenopsis white color which had crown rot and in the process it produced a keiki which in turn produced its own keiki. <laughs> I gave away the larger keiki and kept the smaller one which is this one here. It is loving the water culture as you can see beautiful roots. This one is Bubbles, an orchid I bought last winter. I quite like them. As I bought it in December, this was transitioned into water culture during winter and um, it was also in bloom. And uh, amazingly, it did not skip a bit. Well, not that amazingly because I knew it could uh, be so. Something I noticed with all my falls that I transition to water culture is that they love it and accept it no matter what or when. And last but not least, this is the Phalaenopsis channel Met by Nature sent me recently. It was already in bloom when I got it, so these blooms I don't take credit for. They are getting spent and washed out now, but I quite like them. It reminds me of, the, of my very first Phalaenopsis. There's one leaf growing already and um, the extensive root system of this orchid is also enjoying water culture. I grow all my Phalaenopsis in semi-water culture, meaning that I have their roots partially in water for a number of days, and then I empty the glass vases and let the roots go dry for some days. The wet dry cycle I'm giving them changes according to the time of the year, being subject to temperature and the day length. I pretty much adapt the uh, cycle according to the circumstances, but as a guideline I can say that in the pink of winter, when temperatures indoors get as low as 16 Celsius and uh, when days are very short, I usually give them two days in water and five days dry. And in the peak of summer, like now, when temperature indoors is around 22 Celsius or a bit higher and the days are 15 hours long, I keep the dry period shorter. Currently, I'm giving them two days wet and only two days dry. It may seem complicated, but for me it's not. Once we know our orchids, it is easy to understand when they need more water or if they are taking too much water, especially when we can see the roots, like uh, in this case. Besides, it only takes me 15 minutes or so to fill in or empty the containers. Maybe a bit more if I see algae forming, which I dislike, but it's easily fixed. Every month or so, I take the containers to the sink and clean them thoroughly. But uh, in the meantime, this is what I do if green residues start forming. I pull the orchid out and with a clean hand inside the vases, I clean the inside around using the water to do it, the water already inside to do it. And only then I dump uh, the water into a larger container I brought in. The water inside my containers always has some kind of nutrients in it because I alternate my rain mix fertilizer with calcium, magnesium and seaweed extract. 
except for flushing of course, which I do at least once a month, using pure water to clean the roots of any mineral buildup. And so this is it for my Phalaenopsis hybrids update. I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Should you need any further information on how I grow these orchids in horticulture, please let me know in the comments. Have a great day and thank you very much for watching. See you soon.